<clears throat> this is Jesus and the Son. So today we're going to be talking about how worship of the Son, God, and the dying, rising God has influenced first century Christianity up to the point to where they began to worship a dying, rising God under, um, <clears throat> well, basically by giving him several characteristics of several different uh, deities throughout and augmenting it together into one character is essentially what I'm trying to say. And this goes back to the Ptolemy Isoter. And he introduced the cult of Serapis to Egypt. And this is basically after Alexander III of Macedonia conquered Egypt and introduced this god, Osiris, which is the combination of two deities, Osiris and Apis. And basically, if we fast forward all, uh, and go down to uh, 31 BCE at the Battle of Alexandria, we see that Octavian conquered Egypt after fighting against his rivals Mark Antony and Cleopatra the Seventh. And if we can if we go a bit further down to the first century, we see um, that the Roman Empire has fully incorporated the Egyptian beliefs since they conquered Egypt and uh, including the Greek belief the Greek beliefs which uh, they've already done that several centuries prior at Ptolemy Soter's time he he lived during the late fourth century BCE he, he became governor or actually satrap of Egypt in uh, 323 BCE <clears throat> and that's uh and after all that that's when he introduced Serapis and he was and he, later he was called up. He, I mean, he later became Pharaoh of Egypt after the time of Alexander the Third ended. Um, okay, so if we look at the uh, the Roman and Egyptian myths. Let's talk about Rome for a second. You have different gods like Saul, which is the Roman version of Helios. You have uh, Mithras and uh, and uh, Mithras. He was part of the uh, he was adopted by the Romans from the Greek because Alexander the Third of Macedonia, when he conquered uh, the Achaemenid Empire. Their beliefs were incorporated into the Greek religion, but their, uh, their gods and goddesses were not worshipped that much because the Greeks viewed them as the gods and goddesses of the enemy. So they didn't, uh, he didn't receive that uh, much veneration. Um, and basically, when Rome came around, and their religion was incorporated into the Roman religion, so was the religions that they adopted from the other religions, was also incorporated into the Roman. And then you got, uh, then you go to the first century, and you see, you know, the book of Revelation talks about the seven seals and four horses, which are four of the seven seals. If you go to if you go to the Roman if look at the Roman god Saul, which again he is the simply the Roman version of Helios. Helios 
has four horses pulling his chariot, and he has seven rays emanating from the from the from the sun, this, from the solar halo. And Helios also has a has his solar halo depicted behind his head, just like how Jesus is depicted, how he would be depicted later. And uh, so the four horses, or four of the seven seals, so that was incorporated in there. Then you have the uh, seven seals, which is the seven rays of the sun. But if you look at the uh, religion surrounding Mithras, there's a messiah figure called Sayoshat, whom he said that one day he's going to appear. He's the, uh, and he will uh, some cleanse the world of evil. Similar to how how Jesus is described in the New Testament to one day return and, and, the, and, uh, and he's going to cleanse the world of evil. So what do you think about all of this? I like what we just said when he said Jesus is going to come back and cleanse the world of evil. Why would you cleanse something that you already, that you already, that you, that it, and it all came from you though? Like, you go out there by seven, then the world created evil. I want to do, uh, I do all these things, but you got to cut that that's that you already created. Yeah. 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 The idea uh, that God died and rose again. If, if you go to the Egyptian myths, you have Osiris, and then you have Set. Now, Osiris is understood as the uh, as a son of Ra, the sun god. Now, the sun. has been viewed as the highest and in the sky, or the most high, if you want to put it that way. Um, now, Osiris, he got killed by Set. Following that, he was then resurrected. And then, he began to reign in the underworld. And then, Horus avenged his father's death by defeating Set later. Now, if we go to the New Testament, we see something very similar to this. Jesus was tempted by Satan when Satan offered him the world. Um, and that was in Luke 4, 7. Yes. Yeah. So, and then, and then when he refused, he later gets crucified. And then following that, his death and resurrection, he goes to the underworld for a little bit, and then he goes to heaven. And then, Michael, or Saint Michael, defeats Satan and his rebellion, and he, and he casts him out of heaven. That's just like the same flow of events that occurs in the Egyptian myths. And Satan tempted Jesus where? In the desert. What is set of? He's the god of the desert. And he, and he was the one that caused the demise of Osiris. So pretty much in this scenario, Osiris represents Jesus, right? And Satan represents sex. According to the Egyptian text, and I can see that I can see the yeah the similarity same. between them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and if you and, and uh, basically, the idea of the intermediator between God and man, as Jesus is viewed as such in the New Testament, if you look at Pharaoh Akhenaten. He was viewed the same way, in a, in a way. He was understood as the intermediator between Aten, the sun disk, and man. 
he was viewed as the only way to communicate with Aten, and he, uh, or and some something of a rapper, and uh, he was understood as the son of Aten, just as Jesus is viewed as the son of God. And what we're seeing here is that what's, what's really going on here is that Jesus is being viewed as the son of the son. And when we look at the first century Christianity, we can really see that it's the successor to the cult of Serapis. And that it is a combination of multiple different Roman myths, especially different Roman mythologies that, they, that were accumulated by conquering other cultures, all mixed up together to form the New Testament. So what do you think of all this? Um, I think it's, I believe in it like as facts, you know what I'm saying? Like, how like, when you look at the Bible and you look at all the stuff that's in it, all the allegory and stuff like that, we see that the origins of which it comes from. Yeah. And that's why I don't, I don't, that's why I try to, that's why I was telling my coma the other day, like, I'm like, he, he tells me that he likes to, like, tell me what the Bible means, and, and this other lady told me, well, he shouldn't judge people because of what the Bible said, and I tell him, like, you don't even know where the origin of the story comes from, like, the stories, and I know where the stories come from, like, I know where these stories, what prayers you have from. Yeah, you have to... You have to really, really search, but uh, eventually you'll see it, and that's and that's it, it's it, it takes time, but it's not it's not impossible to do. You can you can research all this and see for yourself. Um, so, is there anything else you want to talk about in the meantime? Um. Oh, let me, let me go to my notes up because I'm uh, trying to see if I can pull something. Okay. Um, let me find something. That's fine. Um, uh, uh, do you have anything that you want to say while, while I look at something? While I'm trying to find something like while I pull some notes. Okay. Um, let me think here. Oh, I got some. I got. I got a good one. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of Christians will say that, like in the Bible, they like to point to the king. Like they like to say that when you die, like stuff like that, like you don't go to heaven or hell. Well, how will if the kingdom of God is to be? So it's like if the kingdom of God is in you, then I pose this question to one of my coworkers. I was like, if the kingdom of God is in you, then where do you go when you die? And he gave me a funny look on his face, and he said he didn't know. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, um Yeah, that that wouldn't uh that wouldn't make any sense, especially considering that the idea that the kingdom of God is within you. So how 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 do you get in there? Like unless uh yeah. Yeah, something. You like meditate or like, like, like yeah. meditate or something? I don't know. Like, that's why I say like all this stuff is an allegory. It has to, like, I remember Jamar said something like that. He said that the Bible is is true but not literally. He says that there has to be a coded message within this book that we have to look for. Like there are coded messages in this Bible that are not are only allegories, but they're not meant to be taken literally. Yeah. Um, I just see a lot of I just see a lot of big time plagiarism in there, and uh, and with that being said, um, is there anything more you want to say before we close out? Um, I would have to say something like this. Uh, 
I remember I was talking to my friend not too long ago. I didn't like a few months ago. He had a discussion about this. Um, it says in Matthew 18, 3, it says, unless you change and become like little children, like, I, I guess have the mindset of a, little, of a child, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven. But then I just explained how that the kingdom of heaven is within you. Right. So, I'm trying to figure out, does God want you to think like a child to him or like, I don't understand, like, you would have some lack of knowledge. Why think like a child? Yeah, that's a but bit... Really doesn't make any, yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. And the last thing I'd like to add is that if you go to Revelations chapter 22, verse 16, um, uh, Jesus is said to be the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now, what's interesting is him being called the offspring of the morning star. That's a that's a reference to the to the uh, you know how the sun rises in the morning. Yes. Well, there you go. That's another fine example of Jesus being called the son of the sun and one form or another. And Jesus is also understood by Christians to be the Son of the Most High. Again, that's the Son. Okay. So is there anything more you want to say before we close out? Uh, no, thanks. I think that should be good. Well, I think that does it.